Okay, so you're going now. This is the start of the interview uh, between Professor Lapizade and Professor Ron Yager. And today is Saturday, uh, September 10th. September 10th. <laughs> and I'm just going to. Okay. Ready? Okay, first of all, it's a great pleasure for me, Lafini, to come and interview you and get a chance to discuss a number of things. I guess the first thing I, I, that always interests me was you were around during a very exciting period after World War II. There were a lot of interesting people in that period. Who were some of the people that impressed you in that uh, post World War II era? There were a lot of giants there. Well, uh, I was a student at MIT from 1944 to 1946. And uh, I very And MIT was a very exciting place at that time. Because there was this uh, RLE, and uh, there were all kinds of projects that were sort of classified as secret up to a certain point, but then. Uh, they were declassified, and Excuse there were people me. like Wiener and McCulloch uh, and uh, uh, very interesting characters. Okay. Very interesting characters. Okay. And, uh, so I was a graduate student, and to me it was. Uh, okay. We have to start over. Okay. I'm so sorry. The light is blocking Ron's head. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I think, raise this. Does it go up? All right. We are so sorry about that. That's okay. okay. Uh, so I'm gonna. So I should re ask my question. Okay. Yeah, maybe just that. We just can, start we can continue. If this is recording, right? You can, can you double check? Uh, how did you turn off the light? Um, did you turn off the light? Do I need the light? Oh, maybe. It's up to you. No, I don't care. It's okay. recording, right? Uh, I see. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Looks good. Can you see the start over? Alright, I'll start over again. I, I, again, it's very interesting for me to be able to speak with you, Lafi. And I guess the first thing that sort of interests me was you were around this very exciting period after World War II, when there were a lot of giants around. Who were some of the people who impressed you during that period? Well, I was a graduate student at MIT from 1944 when I came to the United States in 1946. It was indeed a very exciting period. It was a time when many, many things that were classified during the war were being declassified, and these books were published in the radiation laboratory, and uh, computers were being born during that period. And one personality that impressed me very much at the time was Norbert Wiener. Uh, he was a character, uh, he was extremely absent-minded, uh, but he uh, authored uh, this, at that, that time, this uh, famous monograph on prediction theory, which was highly classified, but then was declassified. And uh, there were many, many uh, other people uh, I have to uh, sort of refresh my memory a little bit, but among them uh, was Pitt's original thinker, McCulloch. So there were many, many things that had become mature at a later time were being born during this post-war period. It was also uh, more or less the beginning of the Cold War, the famous speech by Churchill started the whole thing, and uh, so and that actually added to the excitement because there was the feeling that uh, uh, there would be a competition, uh, technological competition, the government was going to put a lot of money to support the research, and that in itself resulted in a great deal of excitement. Uh, so, uh, I was, in retrospect, I consider myself to be fortunate 
in that I was, I was there when those things were happening. And one event that was uh, particularly significant for me was Shannon's information theory. I heard his first lecture in 1946 at the time I was at Columbia University in New York. And uh, I was extremely impressed by what Shannon had to say. It was a different world. It was a digital world. It was not the world of Laplace transforms and Fourier transforms, which is Norwood Wiener's world. But it is a world of bits, of channels, of entropy, of things that nobody talked about before Shannon did. So I would say that among uh, uh, most significant events at that time was Shannon's uh, development of information theory. Not that the information theory by itself uh, had so many applications, but the entry into the digital world, which was associated with information theory. That was perhaps one of the most important events of that year. I see. Uh, yeah, very interesting. Um, well, as, let me ask you, of course, you've subsequently come to have a, sort of a different view of measure of information than, than Shannon even, right? I mean, but, yeah. it's interesting. And now, is there any particular person who directly influenced your career? Well, uh, I would say that uh, the person who influenced me more than some of the other people were well, Professor Ernst Gilliman. Uh, I took his course on circuit theory, and his courses were models of clarity and precision. And uh, so my taste for system theory, I think, began with my exposure to Gilman's concepts and techniques. Actually, I was somewhat uh, critical of the world that Gilman lived in. And as a student, I would uh, uh, argue with him sometimes, saying, you know what, the world that you are describing, synthesis of different kinds of networks, is too idealized. It's a world in which there are no non-linearity, there is no time variance, there is no nothing, no noise, no nothing. It's a little bit too idealized. And I did uh, express my view at that time to the effect that eventually computers yeah. will be used to do circuit analysis. That real world circuits are too complicated for the kind of theory that Gilman was uh, presenting for his students. So on the one hand, I was very deeply influenced. On the other hand, I wasn't quite uh, on the same wavelength. And uh, the reason why I was more influenced by Gilman is because many of the other professors at MIT at that time were not really research-oriented. They were primarily teachers. So when they took the course, uh, there were no exciting ideas, it's just, you know, you learn something. So, but Gilman, in addition to being a very influential person, he was not only me, but many other people, was an extremely fine person. So, in many, many respects, he was a role model. Uh, let me have a word about professors at MIT at that time. Professors at MIT at that time were very dedicated people, very dedicated people, and they were not really uh, a part of the world that is coming into existence at that time. They didn't know, they didn't know what's the meaning of proposal, grant, they didn't know what it means, you see. It's later, it's later that these things that become part of the real world. We are very innocent in many ways. I see. 
Um, now, another place you spent some time on, which I think was, of course, a, a very, very historical place, was the, at Princeton, the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton. This is a, you know, a place with, with many giants. Could you reflect a little bit upon your experience there? Yes. Uh, well, I was at Columbia University uh, from 1946 to 1959. Uh, I received my master's degree from MIT in 1946. But I did not stay at MIT to work for the PhD degree because my parents uh, came to the United States to settle in New York. I wanted to be close to my parents. So they wanted me to stay at MIT, Milman in particular. Uh, but I decided that proximity to my parents was more important to me. So I was extremely fortunate in that I got a job at Columbia University as an instructor. Were it not for that, if I got a job at, let's say, City College, I would be a big zero today because I would have to teach 15, 20 hours a week. There would be no time for research. Columbia was not like that. Its engineering school was not in good shape, but the derivatives were positive. New people, new ideas. So I was at Columbia University, and uh, I, my main field of interest was system theory. In 1954, I wrote a paper called System Theory. I think I was the first to use that term, system theory. And uh, so I was thinking of writing a book on system theory, and I thought that it would be uh, beneficial for me to spend some time at the place where I would not be disturbed with many other things. And uh, while I was at Columbia, I was very close to the Department of Mathematical Statistics, and in particular to her Robbins, who at that time was chair of the department and became very close friends. And uh, so, uh, you have to be sort of recommended to be admitted as a visiting member of the institute. But anyway, Dean Montgomery is, was a prominent mathematician. He was also a close friend of Herb Robbins. And at the request of Herb Robbins, then he recommended me for membership, visiting membership. So I was visiting member. Uh, I missed seeing von Neumann. It was 56, 57. And I missed seeing Einstein. They were not there anymore. But Oppenheim, Robert Oppenheimer was there.